campus environment. <coughs> sustain a safe, functional, welcoming campus that supports, <coughs> stimulates, and advances di the dynamic needs of students, families, and staff while facilitating relationships with others and Earth. And I think our, um, you know, I was struck, probably one of the first things that struck me when I first came to campus um, was how unique it is as, as a campus. I know I had, um, somehow I was able to find the address on the website, it's a little tricky, and then I wandered around campus trying to figure out what actually is this? Is this like a planned living community? There's all these houses. Um, but as you really live it, you see how unique it is and how beautiful the transition is for children from your home into our small, warm, nurturing homes. Then how for the first through sixth graders, they get to be this bigger community with very unique spaces that perfectly suit you know, the kinds of you know, you know, uh, um, hands-on discovery-based learning that we do, um, perfect for the Montessori and for all the students. And then they get ready for that transition, which will, has been in seventh grade, and the plan will be for it to be sixth through eighth grade on the other campus and really have um, more of a, a high school kind of soft campus up, up on the Northern campus. So it has so much opportunity, but of course the fact that only one of our seven buildings was actually designed to be a school originally um, has with it its challenges. Um, but our beautiful outdoor space is something we've only scratched the surface of using as well. And it is um, by you know, design that we chose a picture of our campus and not just of our buildings when we looked at it very holistically. To develop a campus-wide master plan to optimize the use and potential of the buildings and the grounds to allow for future needs. Um, so we are currently in the process. We have put out the request for proposals. Uh, we have currently five uh, firms putting together proposals for master planning. Um, the hope would be that our facilities committee will, will advise and will um, make a final decision on a vendor or an architectural firm to be commissioned to do that work and complete that work by the end of this summer. So that going next school year, we will have a real you know, actual plan um, with, with goals and numbers and realistic you know, needs-based assessment of our buildings um, going into the, our 100th year. Improve comfort and functionality in an environment that is conducive to learning. So certainly you can read embed in that. Um, is, is not just HVAC, but certainly that's an element. Um, we've heard that it is you know, a little, little warm sometimes in parts of our spaces. But there are so many other elements to that. It's just how um, you know our kids spend so much time on the floor, and it's wonderful. But you know we have to have spaces that are conducive to that, and our kids need to adapt and, and work in different sizes groups. So we need spaces that adapt to that. So you can have a group of of ten working together, or a group of two. Um, we need you know lighting that is bright and uh, enhances instruction, not you know makes us all you know kind of you know squint and get blurry vision. Um, so how we look at that um, is, can be interpreted in many ways. Update restrooms, particularly those open to the public. I know, breaking news. Our, our, <laughs> our restrooms leave something to be desired. Um, but certainly it is, you know, that it's just one way we want to make sure we're always putting our best foot forward. Um, and not just for the public, for all of us to make use of. Um, evaluate resources allocated to our facilities. So how are we, you know, we have to be stewards of the resources we have and we have to make sure that we're using everything to its best advantage. Um, and you know, in any decision we're making, that we're, we're reassessing on an ongoing basis, that we're, we're looking at our vendors recurringly, that we're putting things out to bid and getting multiple bids and, and taking the time to really be um, thoughtful in those processes. Analyze the daily maintenance respons responsibilities of our campus and staff accordingly. There's a lot of activity that happens here every day. Um, even on a quiet day, there is a lot that happens here. Um, and there's, there's a complexity to everything that is beautiful and part of our charm, but requires you know, thoughtful consideration. Enhanced security on the campus. So we certainly have throughout the past years, and especially last year, uh, focus on how we can make sure that our campus is safe and secure. And with, whenever we're making a facilities decision, that you know, takes top priority and will you know, put it right ahead of, of all the other projects um, in, that we're trying to tackle. Some things are, are more complicated because of the building structures that we have, but it doesn't mean it's not a priority, and certainly it's always one of our highest priorities. And implement sustainable practices on campus to reflect the values of the SSJ, to treasure and care for the earth. So in everything that we're doing, both in, you know, process and how we're using our facilities, 
that we are setting a, a, a good model and we're teaching our students to be stewards of the earth. And in the decision we make with contractors and vendors that we use, that we're thinking of our carbon footprint, we're thinking about how we're gonna be more sustainable, um, not just for you know, financial resources, but more importantly for this, the story that we're telling our students. That we, we know that our earth is in crisis and we, we need to be stewards of our earth and model that for our children. So we're so far. So as I mentioned, um, the RFP process for master planning is in full phase, um, and we are prepping for implementation. So we have certainly identified what some of the initial projects hopefully will be, and what things we can do to be best uh, prepared for starting to tackle those projects. What you can expect in the next six months, so completion and communication of the master plan. So through the master planning process, there will be opportunities to gather additional information We've gathered a lot so far, but there will be additional community engagement in that process and help us identify first priority projects and execution of those improvements. Over the next 12 to 18 months, continue facilities improvements, uh, reimagine the Fonfon Library Learning Commons. So the, um, the library certainly is not sufficient to serve all of our needs of students. Uh, it certainly was not designed for the needs of a 2020 student, um, but by moving classes around, we can basically double the size of the library and create a, a learning commons area um, and have that entire wing, that, that part of the U, be part of a larger innovation wing for the STEM area, maker space, small group instruction, whole group instruction. So a lot of exciting things that can happen. Um, up at the Norwood campus, um, as the kids get older, we can have them explore the campus a little bit more. Um, they can certainly make use of the beautiful resources in St. James Anthony Hall, which was designed for a much larger group of students that currently use the building, but also look at spaces within the big house and in other buildings on campus that those kids can make use of. Um, looking at adding audio and television production studio space, um, moving some offices around to bring back the chapel so that there is a place for, for quiet reflection and for prayer um, on that campus. You know, we have the beautiful Nellis Garden here, um, but right now there's no reflective space, uh, no, no prayer space up on the other campus. Um, so we'd like to see, and those are just the, the initial things we know we want to explore. And we know so many more things will, will certainly come through in this process. So drum roll please, I know we had the big email, but um, we had many folks here, but we were very excited um, over the past couple months to, to talk with our faculty about how they are gonna be able to support this process. And you know, one of the things that always strikes me is that the level of excitement and enthusiasm our teachers bring to any new challenge. Um, and you know, we've all been really thrilled and impressed with um, Ms. Craig, Ms. Shannon Craig, this year in her new role in working with us as a partner um, in curriculum instruction. And um, as we spoke, Mrs. Palusa, Ms. Finning and I, over the past few months, we talked about having this council and who would be folks to, to be part of that. Um, and so this, the council, obviously includes um, Abby Motler and Marion Canuso, they're both here this evening. Um, Shannon Craig mentioned Monica Walsh, um, who is uh, relatively new to NFA, uh, but brings rich experience um, and is uh, the lead teacher in the Parish House. Um, Joe Rozowski and Lindsay Sachs. Um, a lot of you know Lindsay from some of the great work she's done with all of your kids, and if she's gotten to share uh, with the parent community. And we're seeing this be an incredibly balanced team that brings such a wealth of perspective and experience as well as knowledge of, of the current curriculum standards and how we can bring that to whole new heights. So we are very, very excited. Um, and then we know that that committee will be looking to both engage smaller subcommittees among the faculty and look for the talent and support of the larger community. We've had great engagement and participation throughout this process and we will look to continue to engage those folks as we, as we move through projects and identify needs within the curriculum we welcome that kind of participation. So this is just um, some pictures of the campus, since I know every time I have someone who has somebody in this building come to my office, they're like, I've never been here before. Uh, so this is James Anthony Hall, for those of you, many of you know well, and then it's only the big house. Um, so this is our plan, and how are we all gonna own it and live it? So this is not meant to be a plan on a shelf. This is not meant to be a process that is complete. This is just the opening of a lot of doors and a lot of work yet to come. And we depend and rely on your engagement in this process. So we certainly want you to stay involved. 
So if you've already offered to be part of one of these committees or support subcommittees, that is wonderful. We would ask you to give some more thought to this. And if you could, as you think about how you see yourself being the biggest you know, agent of change within this process, what are the skills you bring? What are your, what are your passions? And how can we best match them? Um, we will have no shortage of work. Um, we will, you know, we potentially have shortage of workers. So think about that, and please uh, identify within an email to planning um, at norfon.org uh, where your areas of interest are, and we'll help connect you with the right um, committees and areas for um, engagement. We're gonna have some coffees. Um, we'll have a series of opportunities, so we're trying coffees next. They're time the same days as the parent-teacher conferences um, on the 12th and the 13th. Um, so we're doing the mid-morning. Um, we know that that won't work for everyone, so we will have other opportunities as well but it seemed like that was a potential that there would be more people on campus. Um, and we will have you know, meetings specifically about the changes for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade for next year. Um, we will, um, we by design didn't open up this material on the website, but the full plan objectives will live on the website. Um, but we wanted everyone to be paying attention tonight and coming in person. Um, you'll also get um, a simplified brochure you can bring with you to reflect upon. Um, and so that has uh, not as much detail as is in the full plan, but certainly you may help yourself to those on your way out. Um, we'll try to have at least monthly communication about um, great you know, initiatives tied to the plan. And whenever we're communicating, we're gonna try as much as possible to tie um, what we're doing to the plan so that we can all see those connections and see how we're, we're making progress towards our goals. Um, we ask you to be advocates and supporters of this plan in the larger community. You know, you, everyone couldn't be here this evening. So help spread the word and help explain what you've learned and stay engaged in this process.